Rue de Lémoine, à votre conseil de l'adresse, missionnaire de sa famille. Tonight, we celebrate the Nativity of the Lord. Please provide a wave of smile to your neighbor. Please, yes, please hide us your phone and her, our heart to celebrate the sacred liturgy. Our reading for today, the Lord comes to dwell among us. We see forever the goodness of the Lord. Our celebration this evening is by John Peter. Please rise to sing a Catholic song. Thank you. 
and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. After the Babylonian exile, Jeconiah became the father of Sheltiel, Sheltiel the father of Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel the father of Abiud, Abiud became the father of Eliakim, Eliakim the father of Azor, Azor the father of Zadok, Zadok became the father of Akim, Akim the father of Eliud, Eliud the father of Eliezer, Eliezer became the father of Matan, Matan the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From Babylonian exile to Christ, 14 generations. Now, this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, 
Do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife into his home, and he had no relation with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. Sisters and brothers, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I want to thank you and welcome you all to this celebration of the birthday of Jesus our Lord and Savior. Indeed, this is our second mass in our church in St. Bernadette. At 3.30 we have children's carol and the entire church was packed. There is no room for us to stand. Here we are, the second mass. So I want to welcome you, wish you all a blessed Merry Christmas. May you and your family continue to cherish this moment of joy, this wonder. You know, in Spanish they say asombroso, which means awesome. The awesome wonder of the divine presence of God entering into human history. And so we are privileged to celebrate every year with so much joy, forgetting all our worries, forgetting our anxieties, focusing on Jesus again. Because for we live and move and have our being in Him, through Him, with Him. That's our belief. Just to get to that, you know, how we, how we realize that, how we get there to live with Him, through Him, by Him, with Him, in Him at all times, how is this possible? Sisters and brothers, the scripture reading that we read today, it's all about the beautiful promise of the prophecy that has been foretold about 500 years before the birth of Jesus. And every member of the Jewish family is, has got that, that, that longing, every family, because they have been taught over and over and over again about the promise of the Messiah. When the Messiah comes, we will have no pain. When the Messiah comes, we will, we will be redeemed. When, when the Messiah comes, there will be joy and peace and all kinds of stuff. They were all preparing their brain. We gotta pay attention. In the Old Testament, none of them know the name of God. All that they could say is, God of Yahweh, God of Israel, God of Jacob, God of Moses, God of Abraham. That's all they, that's all they were able to say. God of Judah, God of David, God who saved the people of Israel. That's how they prayed. But in the time, in the appropriate time, God himself entered into his dream and he manifested himself as a loving child and we got a privilege to get to know the name of God and to see the face of God. And the name of God is Jesus. And the face of God, again Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the face of God's mercy. He is revealed to us through an ordinary child baby. And ordinary people are chosen to bring forth. That was the missing piece. Everybody was waiting, longing for this coming. They thought he's going to come in the palace, he's going to come in a mighty world. But God decided to enter into human history in an ordinary way. God wants to tell us God works through ordinary things to bring forth extraordinary things. And He revealed to us. Let us look at the manger here. It talks about little manger. That's the only place that Mary and Joseph could have worked, or that was available for them to give birth. 
to the mighty God that has been promised. Every time I talk to the kids about the nativity scene, I hope the kids are listening to me. Are there kids over here? Oh, we got one over here and anybody else? No, you're, there you go. Every time I read about Joseph and Mary could not find a place to, you know, stay, and they have to go into the manger. Little poor guy, little girl put somewhere and say, that's a terrible mistake, Father, Joseph made. Joseph made a terrible mistake? What did he do? You, did, you should have got to computer a separate room in a hotel. He didn't do it. <laughs> kids are kids, right? But let's look at the mentor again. Reminds us about the humility, the poverty, and the wonder of simple things that most of the time we forget. The simple way God reveals to us mighty words. Let's imagine the most beautiful, the most profound things that we know of in our life. It's very simple. But we forget it. I remember in Oklahoma, a school bus driver was given an award for you know driving without any accident for 37 years. Then they say you. <laughs> that he was given an award and the reporters were, you know, interviewing him. What is the secret of you know? Having so successful without any accident whatsoever. And he said, keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> Simple, but you know how much we struggle, how much we fail. And God is bringing us the simple way, the love, the mighty love of God. Through our ordinary baby. So much vulnerability in the baby, so much dependency of the baby. The baby needs a mother, the baby needs a father, the baby needs a family. That's why we say it takes a woman to raise a baby. So much, but it is through that way God revealed His wonder, His mighty works through Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So I just wanted to make you know, remember every single one. We as the people of God got the privilege that the love, that the, the secret is revealed. Manifested to us that God came to save us. That's the main purpose of Christ coming into the world to save us. To save us. St. John puts this way God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that anyone who believes in Him shall not perish but be saved. So the mission of God is to save us. St. Luke's even puts this way, God came to seek and to save what was lost. Wow, that's amazing. We need that reminder of all time. Jesus is seeking for us. Jesus wants to save us. Jesus wants to redeem us. Now we have to ask the question, how are we lost? Because in many ways we are, we are lost in many ways. Many, many ways, every single day, we struggle and pain. I'm thinking in our context today, you know, over almost over almost two years now, we have been struggling with this pandemic situation. You know, vaccine situation is kind of like a you know rocket science that kind of you know they got everybody on board and they did everything that is possible to save the humanity. Let's get vaccinated and stuff like that. They did everything for us. So we got been, you know, struggling in one way, and we got, at least we got some help in another way, but still, you know, we kind of, what is going to happen to our humanity? Do we, are we saved? Do we get, can we have our normal life? All kinds of things. That's one side. You know what the other side, I really want you to pay attention. There is so much negativity is growing in our world. 2016, there was a study that talked about how much negativity that is in the people. Only 20% said, 20% of the people think negative. You know what's happening today? 37%. 20 to 37%. So much negativity. Everywhere you go, darkness. Patience is a big question. Human kindness. Why do I have to be kind? He's so 
there to me, I will be there to me. He's showing something to me, I will show him something. Do you think you can beat me? I'm going to kill you. All kinds of So much negativity. I want you to wake up. We cannot buy into this. This is not Jesus is all about. This is not God is all about. This is not spirituality is all about. We cannot contradict what Jesus taught us. The humble, simple way that Jesus gave us the love, the mercy, the compassion, the unconditional grace that He, he showed to us, He manifested to us he upon the cross, we are lost. Just imagine today or maybe last week when you were driving in the freeway, there was somebody who was crazy, got your attention, maybe you got and you made out colorful words. For nothing, you lost your peace of mind. For nothing, you lost your control of who you are. You lost your control of who you are. Let us not forget, we are children of God. We are called to manifest that grace and love at all times. I know, I know, it's not easy. It is, it is a difficult thing, but God did not show us anything easy. And He did not do anything easy. To follow Jesus, it is a tough thing. Several people thought, tried to follow Jesus and they found it difficult. They went different ways. Jesus even sometimes asked, Okay, do you have a problem? Do you want to go? That's the time St. Peter would say, Jesus, where can we go? You got the life giving words of life. I think it is time for us, sisters and brothers, to be reminded, gently reminded about the love and the beauty of the humility and the love that Christ has brought us. We need to have this awareness at all times. I know there's going to be some people always on the dark side. Why do we think we have so much light in Christmas? The nature of light dispels darkness. Once you light the light candle, you know, Mother Teresa always says, you know, don't be satisfied criticizing darkness, try to light a candle. So that there should be, there, there will be love. There must be some love. If you spend all your life in, you know, judging people, you don't have time to love. Instead of cursing darkness, light a candle. That's Christmas. Because God emptied himself, he left this divine, you know, heavenly, and he entered into a human life as an ordinary person. He wanted to share his divinity with our human life. And so, you know, where I'm driving in, sisters and brothers, may this Christmas, let us make a pledge to God, our Savior, child Jesus, that we can become a confirmed optimist. I'm not talking about money. I know we will always have a problem with money. We will not have enough money that we want to have. To worry and worry and worry and worry and worry. Worry about everything. And so today, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus. So that we might have the love of Christ as a set of May the light of Christ live in our hearts so that our light will radiate like Jesus himself. Let us be like Blessed Mother Mary, let us be like Saint Joseph, doing the will of God is my mantra, my mission. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, Brother Free, at the time of, um, you know, he was born of the Holy Spirit, we would jealously and then continue the creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, for all things visible and invisible. I believe in God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the one of the Father before all ages, the Father of God, the Almighty, the Almighty, the God, 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 the he came down from heaven to his judgment by the Holy Spirit, 
because the Department of the Virgin Mary had become man. Please stand. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his fight. He suffered death and was buried. For those who came on the third day, the gods of the scriptures, he has said in the time, he is here at the right hand of the Father. Who will come again, glory to Jesus, and the living and the dead. And sing him of the hand of men. Our faith in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and the Lord of God, who has spoken to your prophets. I believe in God and the Holy God. I confess on baptism to the forgiveness of sins, and the Lord of the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rejoicing in the coming of our Savior among us, we ask you to hear these prayers we offer. For our church, for Pope Francis, Bishop Michael Coda, our priest, Father John Peter, and all the priests in our diocese, and for all who call themselves Christians, that we might be joyful and truthful heralds of the newborn Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all who believe in Jesus, the promised one, that they share the good news in humility and patience, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those in leadership positions in our world, our country, and our local community, they might be inspired by the Prince of Peace and work to ensure justice for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. All who are sad and hurt this season of Christmas joy, may they know the kindness of others and the compassion of the incarnate Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who are unable to be with us today, those suffering from COVID, those who are ill, incarcerated, or feel alienated from this community, that they might know of this community's love, and that our prayers might unite us with them and inspire us to go forth, spreading the good news to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those celebrating a birthday this week, especially Kylie Nath, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for all of all the families, all the loved ones that we want in lust, those who have no one to pray this Christmas, let us bring them all to the altar of God. Father, help us to welcome Jesus into our hearts. Hear our prayers and grant that we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Praise sisters and brothers that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for following that in them you make manifest the beginnings of all redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon our eyes for our, for, and, our, and for our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love for things invisible. And so with the angels and archangels, with God's and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your glory as they are playing. Remember 
our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed St. Joseph, her spouse, with your Blessed Apostles, St. Bernadette of Petronas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to become of life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in the him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together we pray. My Father, Do not walk around for your views. 
Do not receive it if you have never received it before. And I thank you for your cooperation. If you have never received it before, we have a special spiritual communion and prayer for you. And most importantly, after communion, spend some time in prayer and in adoration. And it is Christmas. That's the most important thing. And no, you don't build your things in your mind. And you're going to take care of it in two minutes. And I think from the church, to the car, and your home. That is the temptation. Let's begin to fight against it. To stay in the church and meditate the wonder of Jesus coming into your heart through the Eucharist. Because you and I are Eucharistic community. And we did the readings, we did the singing, you prepared everything for this moment. But as soon as you receive communion, I don't know how to educate our people. On this Christmas day, I appeal to you, please stay and adore the Lord. Thank you for your attention. That was spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. If I could not at this moment receive you, not commandingly, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
time we have a special prayer in the screen to help you with your adoration. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Almighty God, bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the love of Christ to be merciful like the Heavenly Father. Please be seated for a few minutes. How many children under 10 here? Can you come? Anybody under 10? Okay, come on. Do you have a feet? Can you walk here? Walk your feet? Okay, come on, help me here. Black, blue color. What is your color? Ah, I thought so. Hey, where you go? Come on. Thank you. Okay. We have more papers needed. Come on, come on, come on. Hold this for me. I always wanted to do it with the children. Okay, you can. One on my left, one on my right. What is your name? Aviana? Savan? Viviana. Ooh, give it up for Viviana. Thank you. Here we go. Here we go. Hold this for me. Hold this for me. And what is your name? Henry. Henry. Please give it up for Henry. You are? What is your name? Huh? Shrun? Is it on? Troy. Troy. Okay. Hey. Excellent. We got princess over here. Welcome. Because, you know, we have been talking about, you know, 14 generations, 14 generations. They have been telling that Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, okay? We got to do this, okay? Hold this paper like this. Your paper. Your paper, ready? Hold this corner. Okay? Bring it over here, like this. Excellent. Go over here. Okay, excellent. Okay, now give it a little, little fold, like this. You got it? Can make it a little bit straight so we can have the best picture that we want there. You good here? Are you gonna do this too? Welcome. Here we go. Hold it. So we're making a first fold from Abraham to David. Okay, first fold. Now we're gonna make the second fold. Watch out. We're gonna make it like this one. Okay. Make it like a home. Make it like a home. Here we go. Okay, got it. Okay, slip it. It's a little easy. Okay, yeah, shape it, shape it well. Home like a home. I'm gonna get there in a second, okay? We are home, like right? listen. Abraham to David, first fall. And from David to excitement, we got struck. We need to get out of this place. We need, we need, a, we need a demon. So what happens in, in, um, in excitement? So much you know, slavery, hunger, punishment, right? 
So more crushing, right? So we're gonna fold it in the half in the middle. Go in the middle. In the middle, 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 middle. There you go. Yay! Good job. Here we go. Excellent. Fold it nicely. Fold it nicely. Okay, down in the middle. Yeah, you got, you got Oh, this is a thick paper. Okay. Okay, here we go. Fold it. Now, in the excitement, so much. Sorrow, we need a redeemer, we need a redeemer. That's what everybody was saying, right? So everybody's praying. And the promise of the prophets and everything. So people are going through so much. Okay, now help me, okay? Hold this one, hold like this. Okay, go ahead. Turn it over. Okay, here we go. Hold like this. Now carry with me, ready? Right? Here we go. From the top, down. Carry with me straight, straight. Keep it straight, okay? Keep it straight. Very, very. Okay, you did good, good, good. Okay, am I with you? Yay! You got it. Let me take this one. Let me take this one. Let me take Okay, let's open it. Let's open it. Let's open it. Let's open it. Open it nice and clear. Show it to everybody. What is it? Great job, Vivian. I'm not a good teacher, you can tell, huh? You did a great job, high five. Excellent. I'll do it again with you. Jesus, the promised Messiah that generation to generation they have been waiting for. Let's go celebrate Jesus. And as a family, be saved. Help everyone to be saved. And keep Jesus as the center of your family, which is love. Merry Christmas to you. Please stand for the final uh, game. Okay.